So on the simplest level, you think of a filter as a screen, like the screen in your house that keeps mosquitoes out. And uh, that's kind of a, a size selection. Things bigger can't get through. And when you think of a gas filter, you think of a uh, feather duster, something that has enough surface area to, uh, to attract a particle or to have a particle likely to come in contact with it. And Integris now is working on combining those two that acts both as a screen and as a feather duster. I'm Rob Zeller, and I'm a research engineer at Integris, and I've been working developing uh, metal filtration media for uh, Integris' customers. Well, you know, gas filtration has been around a long time. For industrial applications, probably started a couple hundred years ago when um, there was environmental, in both in small spaces and in large spaces, pollution. So there was a need to, to deal with that. Going back further, I would guess, no one knows for sure, but I would guess that the first gas filters were used um, when people needed to avoid breathing smoke or dust. And they may have incorporated, uh, you know, it might've been something with the advent of fabric. Like I said, a t-shirt will remove, you know, soot from smoke, uh, not all of it, not even most of it, but enough of it maybe to allow you to breathe. So it could have been associated with the development of fabrics or it could have been some sort of big leaf from a tree or something that, that had, was porous enough to be able to breathe through. But no doubt they discovered that it was a lot more comfortable when you were on the bad side of a campfire to have to breathe through something that reduced the, the effects of the smoke. In terms of, of uh, porous metal or, or, or non-organic, non-polymeric or non-fabric type media, Again, it's been around a long time. They would they made pottery, the first potteries. They're porous, they're made out of clays that are porous. Um, and they have, uh, in, you, you may be familiar with glazing. They, they glaze pottery because if they didn't, water would run through it in, in some cases. So they developed glazing and then they would have pottery and then they would use that. They probably figured out after a while that you could take relatively dirty water and make it clean by putting it in a jug and letting it flow through. It was the beginning of it. And that's what we do today in a much more technically advanced way. We, we do a process called sintering, where you take a, uh, a very fine powder, or in some cases, not so fine a powder, depending on what you want. And you heat them up to a temperature, you know, below the melting point, but high enough to, to start bonding of the particles together. The point in gas filtration is that you have this matrix that is like a labyrinth of, of passages and with all sorts of twists and turns and that the probability is very, very high that any particulate in there is gonna come into contact. And once it comes into contact, it sticks there. There's a number of uh, forces, electrostatic, they're, they're called Van der Waals forces, that uh, capture the particles and keep them there. So that's how a gas filter works, more like a feather duster than a screen. To do this, of course, you need a lot of internal surface area. So you need a lot of, a lot of, a lot of walls and corners and nooks and crannies for, for particulates to get trapped in. And they need to be small, even though the pore size probably is more in the range of a micron, which is a millionth of a meter, rather than you know, a billionth. Uh, you can pack a fair amount of surface area in a, in a small volume, think of a sponge or any porous part that that has a lot of nooks and crannies in it. Well, that's what a gas filter is. So when we think of internal surface area, uh, there's a good analogy that I like to use. And if you think of a, a, a single sphere, a single solid sphere, like a bowling ball, and that has a certain surface area on the outside of it that there's an equation for, for the surface area of the sphere. And when you think about gas filter media, think of that sphere, but instead of a solid bowling ball, it's a sphere made up of millions, tens of millions, billions, if not more, of very small spheres that are all bonded together and uh, interconnected and solid and uh, porous and uh, very torturous paths between the particles and everything. The amount of surface area inside that is infinitely more than just the surface area of a, of a solid bowling ball. And that's basically a gas filter medium. Um, that you take very, very fine particles 
and bond them together to form a highly torturous por porous matrix that if a particle enters in a gas, it's not getting out. I mean, that's how gas filters work. Think of an N95 mask, compare that to say a cloth mask. So an N95, and 95 stands for 95% efficient. So that mask removes 95% of almost all particulate matter. And a cloth mask is probably closer to, well, 20% efficient. And the reason isn't because of pore size or the smallness, it's because the N95 mask actually has a layer inside of it that's made of very small fibers that have a lot of surface area. And the, and the virus tends to get captured in that fine matrix in there. Whereas a cloth is, you know, look at a, a t-shirt or something and it's just a, a woven fabric and the, the fibers are probably in the order of you know, 100 or more microns versus the fiber in N95, which is in the order of like, again, in, in the millionth of a meter range, very small. Now, integrous gas filters, if we want to talk about N95, they're more like N99.9999999, that's nine nines, percent efficient. They remove essentially everything uh, down to a very, very small size. So you might ask, what's the need in filtering gases that are used to manufacture semiconductor and chips? And the answer is, is pretty simple, that any, any uh, particulate matter, any foreign matter inside a gas that gets onto the chip while it's being fabricated will cause a, a short circuit like between two wires and it'll, it'll make that chip um, defective, it won't work. Um, and it, if there's a lot of them, it may make many chips. So you're talking about uh, productivity, you're talking about yields, you're talking about, uh, you know, lost time and effort and uh, costs going up for your cell phone and whatnot. So, Purity of chemicals used uh, in semiconductor manufacturers is, is a, a main and, and ongoing and advancing concern. One of the more interesting and exciting parts about uh, metal, sintered metal membranes for uh, cutting edge applications is the fact that there's so little research that's been done there already. It's really, uh, it's really not well covered. It's not like the automotive industry where millions, billions of dollars are placed into research for, for making parts cheaper and quicker and more efficiently. This is, after all, a very niche application in semiconductor fabrication, specifically for gas filters, for filtration, and specifically for metal media. So it's, it's a very narrow field, and it's not like you can just open a book and, and say, oh, this is how we do this, this is how we do that. So uh, every day, practically, is, is, uh, is a voyage of discovery and uh, innovation and trying to, to find new ways to do things or, or uh, old ways of doing new things. It's just a, a very uh, exciting, it's, it's, it's dynamic, and uh, you can really see the results of your work in, in developing um, new medias that meet challenges that we're facing today.